uh, introducing a session title of Building Organizer Tools for the Future of Campaigns. Um, it's a it's a tandem session um, presented by two people, uh, Alex Stinson and Ilana Fried. Um, and the floor is yours for the next 45 minutes, including questions and answers. Great, thank you so much. Um, so how we're gonna do the session uh, is we're gonna have about a 20 minute introductory video that we've been uh, uh, using to introduce kind of our product tools. Uh, we're doing the video so that we can focus on chat questions that you have uh, during the, the comment um, and also to make sure that we're sharing with different communities a similar uh, kind of introduction to our product work. Um, but afterwards, uh, since we have 45 minutes, we have some time to hear from you. Like, what do you want from campaign tools uh, in the movement? Um, and so we're going to start, uh, encourage you to start collecting ideas in the Etherpad for this session. I'm dropping the link there. Um, we'll also share the slide deck and the, um, uh, in, in the chat in a moment. Uh, but I will start the video now and we will uh, I'll see you on the other side and feel free to ask questions during the chat. Hi. And somehow I'm missing the audio uh, from what we're doing. Oh, no, uh, just like uh, if it's not working, I let's, let's see if we can get the audio going. I mean, it, it, was, it was working uh, when you moved your mouse. It, uh, but the, the, the overall the overall quality of the audio is not that is not that perfect. So I'm afraid we might be losing quite a lot. Uh, Oh, um, Alana, do you want to give the presentation from Slide Deck or can you hear it? That would be uh, preferable because, as I said, the quality of the audio makes it a bit okay. difficult to, uh, to the understand. Presentation. Yeah, if you, cool. if you could, that um, would be highly, highly, highly. Uh... So I'm shifting presenter view and we will, we will do it. Um, so we will start from the beginning. Um, so hi, uh, uh, I'm Alex Denson. Uh, I'm a senior program strategist at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, if you haven't met me before, uh, I've been working on uh, kind of community organizing and programs uh, over, the, over the last seven years at the foundation. Um, I had the present, last presentation about libraries and One Love, One Ref uh, made me very, very happy. And I'll introduce you to my colleague, Alana. Hi, I'm Alana, um, and uh, I'm the product manager for the new campaign tools team at the Wikimedia Foundation. And I'm looking forward to just sharing with you all today what we're working on. Um, and so uh, here's a brief structure of what we're gonna do uh, in the, the uh, presentation. We're gonna use, introduce you to the definition we're using for campaign. Uh, uh, a brief introduction to why campaign software um, and then uh, Alana is going to run you through kind of where we're starting as a product team on that work. Um, first, uh, as kind of a definition for campaigns, uh, campaigns come in a lot of different flavors in the movement. Um, as the CEE community knows quite well, uh, there are a lot of different types. Uh, the CEE campaign, Wiki Loves Earth, Wiki Loves Monuments, and people have smaller events. Uh, I know Macedonian Wikipedia has editing weeks on a regular basis. Occasionally Russian Wikipedia has these writing contests, right? Um, they come in a lot of different formats. Uh, we're using a really broad definition uh, for our, our product team. Uh, a campaign is any event that summons contributors with a focus on a particular uh, set of topics of, or a type of contribution for a window of time, right? So any call to action like that. Um, there are certain types of campaigns that have kind of rewards or, or uh, prizes like contests and challenges. And these campaigns exist on all the wikis. Um, we, we are thinking of campaigns as trying to be as wiki agnostic as possible, but as you know, this is, it, it varies a lot. Um, you're probably pretty familiar with one of these. Uh, many of you in this room organize CE Spring in your context 
for one of the um, photography contests, um, the movement is doing these more and more. New ones show up every year. Uh, local events show up every year that the rest of the movement rarely sees because they're often in one language, one wiki. Um, but these, the volume of these activities is quite high. Uh, and so, um, but it's also something that our software doesn't support. Um, and part of the reason the software doesn't support it is because, uh, so I, I did this uh, kind of mapping of the different ways people participate in campaigns uh, about, uh, I don't know, six months ago, three months ago. Basically, international or meta organizers, local organizers, and participants in every campaign have like really complex work workflows, and we've we've hacked these together over the last ten or twelve years of campaign organizing in the movement with a mix of like really highly customized local tools most of the time, uh, with the occasional international tool like the ones developed for WikiLove's monuments, and really complex social systems, and so from like campaign organizers kind of know these things intuitively, but new organizers often end up in a really weird position when they try to get started because it is not obvious how this works. Uh, and, it, and it's not obvious on like many, many, many fronts. Um, and this is really a problem when we think about movement strategies, topics for impact recommendation, which is like we as a movement need to figure out where the gaps are and how to fill them. And we need to bring the people along to do that. Um, a call to action, a campaign, an editing event is probably the way that most communities will do this. Uh, you, you can do some of it with GLAN partnerships or other institutional partnerships, but like the writing and creation of content mostly comes from large groups of people. And we wanna kinda, if that's what we need, and especially in like emerging contexts like Africa or in kind of limited amounts of organizer environments like the CEE community, we really want to make it easy to organize from day one. Uh, new organizers should be able to show up and run an event and be successful as part of a campaign um, and not need like too much mentoring or too much uh, kind of additional support and guidance from an experienced organizer. Um, and so that's why we think there's a real technical opportunity is we might be able to simplify, consolidate, and, and kind of make the different parts of a campaign make much more sense together um, in, in one system. Um, so from now on, I'm gonna hand over to Alana. So hello everyone again, I'm Alana um, and I'm the product manager for the campaigns team at the Wikimedia Foundation. Next slide. Uh, so Campaigns is a new team at the Wikimedia Foundation. We were formed in 2021. We're a software and product development team, and we're focused on building and improving tools for campaign organizers and participants. Our goal is to provide software solutions that empower and support campaign organizers. So for experienced organizers, we really want to simplify their workflows and provide more powerful tools and for new organizers, we want to make it easier to become effective long-term organizers. Next slide. Okay, so as a team, we want to be building solutions that are really impactful to organizers. To do this, we decided to really talk directly to the organizers as a first step. So we set up calls with over 50 campaign organizers who worked in different types of campaigns, in different wikis, and in different parts of the world. Uh, in our chats with the organizers, we wanted to know what was working for them, what wasn't working for them, and what problems they wanted us to solve. From these conversations, we identified 11 key requests or problem areas, which include a central place where they can find tools and resources available to them, easy ways to create high quality, contemporary looking event pages, better tools to promote campaigns on and off Wiki, Improving the ease of finding events for newcomers and junior editors, easy on wiki ways to register participants, better tools to communicate with participants and other organizers, better ways to track, analyze, and report impacts, and easier ways for participants to receive recognition and find what to do next after a campaign event ends. Next slide, please. 
So we feel that the best way to address these many problem areas is to treat them as interconnected issues that need to be addressed at a systematic level. So rather than saying, okay, we're just going to fix these top two problems, we'll build out a larger platform that can provide support to organizers. This will be a two-sided campaign events platform with an organizer side and a participant side. This platform will be modular, meaning features can be separated and recombined, and it'll be extensible, meaning we'll work on features for the platform, but other teams or volunteer developers can also build features too. Um, and this platform will be small, but it'll grow over time. Our first project for the platform is building a registration solution, and we'll show the next slide how it can support future work. Next slide, please. Okay, so in this diagram, you can see the 11 campaign event requests that I talked about in a previous slide. Uh, we'll start by building an early version of an organizer center and a registration system, which will be like the building blocks for future work. So for example, after registration, we can build out the ability to create events in a standardized structured way. From there, we can build an event discovery system or event calendar system of some sort where people can learn about it, easily join campaigns. Uh, another thing to notice is in this diagram is that the more arrows something has, the more complex it is. So this is because there are many dependencies and early steps would ideally be taken before building out the feature. So for example, next steps and the participant center are complex spaces and they may require some more projects get completed first before I really dig into them. Um, another thing to notice is that this diagram is color coded. Green is what we plan to focus on first. Purple is what we'll probably focus on next after registration, and it's where we predict that we'll begin to see impact around organizer empowerment and growth. And then finally, we have blue. This is the most complex work, and it'll probably be the space that we focus on last. This is where we can predict to see impact the number of participants joining campaigns and how successful they are as editors, both during and after campaign events. Next slide, please. So now let's talk about registration. Next slide. Um, so for this project, our objective is to build an on-wiki registration, configuration, and management solution. Our goal is that we want to empower organizers by making it easy to see who is coming to campaign events and how to effectively support them. <laughs> Pardon for the fire truck going by. This way, organizers can identify opportunities for growth and re-engagement within their communities and contexts. Next slide, please. Okay, so what are the problems with the current registration solutions? Right now, there are a lot of different kinds of problems, which we'll briefly run through, but generally speaking, the current solutions are time consuming for organizers and they're not integrated with tracking tools like the dashboard. So for OnWiki solutions in particular, they tend to look and feel outdated and they're technically challenging for newcomers. They provide minimal information on participants and their needs, and it's difficult for organizers to contact participants. As for the off-wiki solutions, they aren't integrated with Wikimedia wikis and workflows. They're difficult for participants to edit. Participants can't see who else joined, and they're not generally supportive of multilingual communities or the values around privacy that are core to the Wikimedia movement. Next slide, please. Uh, so what's our vision? Uh, first, let's talk about the advantages of on-wiki and off-wiki solutions. So the advantages of on-wiki solutions are they're integrated with Wikimedia workflows and privacy standards, and you can see everyone else publicly who registered for the events. Uh, for off-wiki registration solutions, the advantages are that organizers can collect rich participant information, and it's easy for people to register. Um, so our vision is to really get the best of both worlds. So to blend the communalism from on-wiki solutions with the ease of use from off-wiki solutions. And we also have an added bonus, which is integration with tracking tools. So usernames of registered participants will be automatically pushed to your, as an organizer, tracking tool of choice, like the programs and events dashboard or event metrics. So you will no longer need to merely add the usernames yourself or ask participants to add the usernames to the dashboard. Um, 
Some people have also asked why we aren't considering using open source solutions that already exist for registration. Um, so I'll start by saying we're just onboarding engineers who are joining the team. So there's a lot of stuff that we're in very early stages of discussing and nothing is set in stone. But as a general principle, we're thinking that we want to build something that's actually integrated into Wikimedia workflows and systems so we can build a larger campaign events platform over time. There may be certain open source solutions we can use in the backend which will be the determination of the engineers, but our main goal is to integrate organizing activity on the wikis rather than keeping it off. Next slide, please. Uh, so what are the benefits that this new registration solution could provide? Uh, with a registration solution, organizers can get an easier configuration experience, more information on participants, better support for languages, integration with wikis and integration with tracking tools. Meanwhile, participants can get an easier event registration experience, an easier account creation experience, a view of other campaign participants and better onboarding onto wikis. Next slide. So the last thing I'll say before I share the wireframes is that uh, we will need to build this in an agile and iterative way. So this means that we'll start building something small so we can test it and get feedback from everyone. And then we'll expand it and add more features over time. Uh, so the first version of the registration system will be pretty slimmed down and basic. But over time, here are some things we imagine it may provide. Uh, organizers asking for optional information of participants, like their wiki editing level or gender. Organizers specifying which information is public versus private. Organizers being able to apply a search filters on the participant list and send targeted messages based on those filters. Organizers being able to contact participants based on their contact method of choice. Newcomers being directed to onboarding tools and resources before or after events. Organizers creating standardized, visually appealing event pages and more. And now we'll discuss the wireframes. So next slide, please. So now we'll be sharing some wireframes. Um, bear in mind, these are early ideas uh, for how the registration experience will look. These are just idea ideas. We haven't built anything yet. We're sharing them because we want to get feedback on them. Uh, so next slide, please. So we want to create a space where organizers can find all the tools we build for them, as well as other tools that are available to them built by other volunteers or teams. Um, so for now, we're calling this space the Organizer Center, but uh, this name may change over time. This is just kind of what we're calling it now. Um, we are thinking that people can access the Organizer Center via a top link, where users also find the Contributions link, which will be available in all wikis. So this way, it's really easy for people to learn how to become an organizer and to access the center. Uh, next slide, please. Once the user has accessed the Organizer Center, they can click on the first tool available in the center, the Registration Configuration System. So they will click Create Registration for your campaign events. Next slide, please. Um, once they've clicked it, they can begin creating their campaign event registration form. So here they'll enter information like the event page URL, event name, date and time of the event, whether it's virtual or in person, the location of the event, the tracking instance of the event, such as the programs and events dashboard tracking instance, the usernames of other organizers of the event, if there are any, and a link to any chat group associated with the event, if there is any. Um, so note that this means that some things need to be prepared in advance before this setup occurs. So the organizer will need to set up the event page and the event tracking instance and the chat system before doing this registration configuration. Um, this project is really just building out the registration system, but we do plan in the future to build out more support for being able to create things like event pages. And when that occurs, we'll be working on integration with registration. Um, so now once the organizer is done, they click registration. And now we see that the organizer has published the form 
and a bottom sheet will appear on the event page that was specified by the organizer when they gave the URL of the event um, when they were configuring the forum. So the reason why I picked this bottom sheet is it allows a lot of flexibility rather than having the event page conform to our registration experience. It allows the organizers the ability to still create a lot of different event pages and it's just a bottom sheet on the event page. Um, so this bottom sheet will allow people to easily register for the event under their username. So they can click register as username. Now, if let's say my username was Tina, it would say register as Tina here. So I could click register as Tina or more info. Now, if I click more info, you can see the side sheet opens up, which displays more information on the participants and the event. Um, here also, I can choose to register as username or register as Tina. Um, so next, next slide, please. Um, so if someone isn't logged in, they'll be asked to log in before they register for an event. Next slide. And if someone doesn't have a Wiki account yet, they'll be asked to create one before they register for an event. But you see, we actually have this as part of the event registration process, as opposed to having them go to a different tab or a different view or a different page, because we want to make it as easy as possible and to have people remember that they're really registering for an event. We want them to feel like that's the end goal. Uh, next slide. So after someone has registered for an event, they will see a confirmation message at the top. The message will automatically disappear after a short time. They will also be able to edit the registration via the bottom sheet or the side sheet. Uh, additionally, we would like an automatic message to be emailed to users after they register. This will be a confirmation message that can have basic information on the event, such as the date and time and location, uh, the chat group that's relevant. Um, so these will all be things that the organizer had previously added when they configure the registration system. Next slide, please. Um, so for the first version of the tool, we will have a really basic registration process where people will only be able to register via username. So for this reason, if you want to kind of edit your registration, the only action you can really take for version one is to be able to leave the campaign. So some if someone wants, they can choose to leave the campaign this way. However, in later versions, we plow when we plan to allow organizers to ask optional questions of the participants, like their gender or their wiki skill level or their location, that's where the um, participants can actually edit their responses is through that flow. Next slide, please. Um, so now let's look at the organizer side after participants begin registering for campaign events. Um, so first, organizers can see a list of all the registration forms they've configured in the organizer center. They can click on the registration form they want to view. Uh, note that any username that was specified as an organizer for the campaign event will be able to access the registration form and its relevant organizer details. So next slide. So this is the view that organizers will see for a campaign event. Uh, once registrants start adding their names. So once they click on the registration form, organizers can see the total number of people who join the event, the usernames of participants, and when they joined. They can also select some or all of the participants to either delete them or send messages to them. If they choose to message them, they can specify if they want to message them via the user talk page, email address, or both. Uh, one thing to point out for version one, you'll notice that all we're collecting on participant information is public information, their usernames and when they join. And we did that as the first version because it, um, it's the easiest to do. It provides the lowest risk. When we start getting asking for more sensitive information, that's later on because we want to really make sure that we're doing it in a really thoughtful and secure and privacy-centered way. Okay, so next slide. And that actually concludes the wireframes. So now we're opening it up to questions and we love to hear what you think so far and any ideas you have. Uh, so we'll open it up. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. We've got about 20 minutes um, devoted to uh, Q&A and uh, therefore I would encourage you to raise your hand in the, in the participant list if you want to ask a question. Um, and there was a comment um, in the chat about Fountain Tool. Um, uh, I, I'm just kind of 
uh, connecting it. So we're, we're connecting the first couple uh, kind of ahead. tracking tools we're going to connect are uh, the programs on Nuns dashboard and event metrics because they are very like, let's take the username, let's track them during a window of time, uh, kind of MVP. But you'll notice in the, um, the design here, uh, we have, we're going to have a field in the form. Uh, it's, it might be hard to see at this where we ask for like, what other tracking tool are you using? And the whole point is to see what other tracking tools the movement is really heavily using, like Fountain. We know, we know Fountain's there. We know with like C Spring, for instance, use a bot. Um, we're, we're really conscious that there are like a lot of other tools out there um, and some of them are very like language or keeper spe specific. Um, and so we're, we're going to collect that data and really prioritize like trying to hook up those over time. But each of them is going to have different requirements, right? Like a uh, fountain tool, for instance, is kind of complex as a workflow uh, if you're a non Wikimedian and it only wants to deal with like individual articles. Um, so it's it's kind of like it, it adds a couple layers of complexity um, in the technical design if we were to try to hook it up. Um, so that's that's just like something to pay attention to. Um, as we're, we're trying to keep it simple now, it'll get much more complex as we get deeper in. Thank you, Alex, for this uh, for this comment. And thank you for referring back to the uh, to the chat and and uh, taking it out of the chat to um, to comment here. Okay, anyone else? I don't see any raised hands in the in the participants list, which worries me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, we also have some questions in the um, in the Etherpad too. Um, like, are there any events or uh, event pages or uh, campaign tools that we're not covering? Uh, and like, you're having questions about. Um, we'd love to know uh, because we're we are beginning to think about kind of future stuff. Um, event pages is probably sooner on the roadmap than later. Uh, and so we're also looking for like really good examples of event pages that you're like, ah, yes, as an organizer, I really want all these elements to be there. The awkward seven seconds. Yeah, the awkward silence. I'm already looking. I'm looking forward to use and try. What was that? Oh, the uh, sauna. You you said you're looking forward to trying it. I just wanted to say that I uh, recent, right now I don't have any question, but I'm I'm very curious how it will work or in practice. Um, as an organizer, Samat, uh, do you have anything that like you would really want, like you're, it, when you run events, is there something that's really breaking down for you uh, on the kind of wiki workflows? Well, right now I, I have nothing to say, which you don't, didn't think on until now. So, but I, I will share as soon as I have any, anything which you missed. Cool. While well, we're waiting for people to have thoughts, um, we we do have a project page on Meta um, and a subscription list for updates. Um, I, I can show that to you now. Um, we, we have a, uh, here, here's the project page. Um, you'll kind of see, we did the background comparative research based on Alana's kind of discussion with 50 organizers or so. Um, and then we have the wireframes on meta. Um, and, uh, we have some questions on the talk page 
uh, that we would love feedback on. Um, and then you can also find, and that's in the links in the slide deck as well, um, when you, uh, there's an update, there's a mass message newsletter. Um, and if you can, if you want to add your name to here, we can make sure that um, you get updates. Uh, uh, we're sending them about once every month and a half, two months. Um, and once the software um, starts kind of being deployed, we, we will likely have even more kind of more substantive updates than feedback ones. And I can just read out uh, what there was something that uh, Jim Hayes wrote, which uh, parallels what we've talked about a bit, but I think it's worth stating. Uh, he wrote, events on Wiki now have the hurdle of Wikicode sign up for newbies. And yes, this is one of the kind of original things that we noticed that we really wanted to improve was we thought there were a lot of advantages to registering for events on Wiki. And from the get-go, people participating in events on Wiki. But it, that's just a basic hurdle for new folks. So we wanted to simplify that process. Um, and uh, also... Uh, one small thing too is we saw I saw that the campaigns there's a little uh, the campaigns programs team uh, page got shared so there's um, to clarify since it might be a bit confusing we now have sort of two sides of the house for campaigns we have the programs team um, which Alex is on and then we have the product team which I'm on so the programs team uh, is focusing more on training and um, capacity building and uh, actually running some campaigns, whereas I'm on the product team, so that's the software development team, um, which will be building the new tools. Um, so I can share the link to the product team page. Um, and where we're at is that uh, we are collecting feedback now in the wireframes I just shared. And um, we just had some engineers join. So they're in very early stages of onboarding and research and beginning to think of um, architecturally how we'll build registration. I do have a feeling that, uh, you know, the, the mm, wiki, wiki code, wiki markup hurdle is uh, Basically, a hurdle for all newcomers, uh, not only people who want to um, to want to participate in campaigns. On the other hand, campaigns are a great tool to attract new um, attract new users in general. So, so the hurdle uh, gets all that you know all that higher uh, in terms of yes, in terms of user involvement. Well, and there's some campaigns like C Spring where something like one in eight participants is new or something like that. Uh, and I, I, I just have this, like, every time I see it, I love the campaign. It's beautiful. You create tons of content. But what I'm, what I notice is like the way the kind of multilingual event is happening. And then people have to register in each of the wikis on a text page. And then like mm -hmm. the tracking is all convoluted. Like I could imagine a lot of newcomers getting lost in there. Right. And it also, um, we're kind of imagining a future in two or three years, right? Where you can just like invite every reader and they can come in and they figure out how to register and the organizers can talk to them and they can talk to them in like meaningful direct ways, right? I think right now, like we, we rely on someone knowing the organizer to get good feedback and mentoring to like solve this problem of like signing on to the page, creating good content, that kind of stuff. And as we've learned with the, the growth tools um, and the, the uh, yeah, the growth tools is that um, like that custom uh, first day uh, uh, thing that was mentioned in the last presentation, having that kind of on wiki support uh, is really useful. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're kind of starting, um, so we know a lot of campaigns are run all over the movement, 
but we're we're kind of starting with the real focus on the communities in Africa mm-hmm. because they're running a lot of newcomer events, like a lot, a lot of newcomer events. And they all have WhatsApp groups or Telegram channels attached to it. Um, and so very early on, we're like, oh, we have to make sure there's space for that. And we can get a sense of, we can use these campaign events to get a better sense of how much, how people are using chat in different parts of the movement. The, 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 you know, writing on on what you said, there is a there is a comment from Samat. Uh, Real time chat mm-hmm. or support would be useful generally, not for campaigns only. And I totally agree with that. Uh, I, uh, I'm I'm sort of torn between two um, two extremes: wanting uh, a Wikimedia system for live chat and allowing uh, individual communities to to decide whether they want to go with uh, whether they want to go with discord whether they want to go with uh, with telegram whether they want to go with um, with whatsapp mm, so there is no good answer here i think yeah i think one thing too with what we're building is part of the reason you want to build things in a modular way is we don't want to create a system where every organizer in order to use any of our tools has mm-hmm. to use all of them and has to use them in just the one way we imagine. We really want organizers to be able to pick what works for them. So mm-hmm. in the future, when we build potentially you know, an event page creation system or improved tools for list building or whatever it may be, you know, some things we build, organizers will say, okay, say these five of these 10 things you built, that's great, that's what I want. But these other five, I've maybe my own processes and my own way of doing things and I wanna keep that. And that's a philosophy that we want to keep in mind. And you see that even with like, you know, the first one we did with registration, we wanted organizers to still have that flexibility with their event pages. Mm -hmm. Um, So even if we approach something in the future to improve communication tools, and right now we're just calling it improved communication tools because we don't know exactly what that is. We don't know if it's a chat. We don't know what it is, but we're going to, we're aware of the fact that there'll be some things that people continue to do that works better for them. And that's okay. As long as we are making improvements that serve the greatest needs and people are having an easier, better time in their campaign experience, then we feel like we're on the right track. So Matt, you mentioned that you're, uh, ex- exper- uh, I think, experimenting, right, with Matrix recently, with uh, quite positive results. Can you can you elaborate? Um, it's not directly connected to the topic of the presentation. That's why I didn't want to disturb it. But okay. yes, we have a the an inst- local installation of Matrix, and uh, we are looking forward or waiting for the for the uh, handling uh, separate threads which is upcoming and Mm -hmm. after that we we will probably try to include also the Wikimedia login so people don't don't need to register for Matrix if they would like to join. After that our plan is to include it into somehow the the Wikipedia surface itself so if you would like to support newcomers uh, if they have any question Mm -hmm. they can ask directly to the community members on on chat i mean we've uh, we've uh, decided to go with discord last year uh, with our polish community and 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 it's a very vibrant alive and and pretty dynamic uh, place where where people ask questions where people make requests for admins where people you know come to get to know something or where people just want to hang out with with one another there is a dedicated channel for for quizzes uh riddles and competitions even uh the, the our irc channels were very very viral uh, around 2010 they were very successful but yes the back in 2010 time- yes <laughs> Yes, but the time is over, and or how should I say they? It's it's, it's an age technology, but now yeah. we should find yeah. something which is similar and can serve us similarly. Yeah, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, Polish IRC channels were active as as recently as say four or five years ago, uh, but uh, Discord offers very good. Um, 
very good productivity, very, very nice environments, uh, you know, visually attractive, or well, much more attractive than IRC. Uh, and the infrastructure is very stable. Come on, it's a gamer's um, communication device. What do gamers want? Low ping times and uh, high reliability. Yeah, it, it's it's really interesting the more we hear different experiences because like, um, so I, I'm based in Latin America, like the Spanish speaking world runs on WhatsApp. Uh, I, like I, it, it's very hard to get people and in, in events here onto something like Slack or Discord or <laughs> like another platform because they're just so baked into WhatsApp or, or Telegram if they're from like the open open community. Um, and so it, it's it's very interesting to watch this happen in different parts of the movement because like we're all trying to say, solve the same problem, but the cultural context is making like certain tools much better than others. I think that uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's a common thing around the world that some tools or some methods or, or, or some services work well uh, in, special, in specific countries while not so hot in the others. Uh, we don't have a large audience for LinkedIn, for example, in Poland. Uh, Twitter, is, uh, Twitter is marginalized. And for some reason, we were never able to uh, embrace eBay as uh, you know the selling platform but we've got our own polish platform which is called allegro and which is basically the synonym of selling things online in poland so that that, that would be the same with communication uh, devices communication programs chat programs etc uh, telegram might work better in some countries in some regions for a reason uh, while well, Discord will work in others. Uh, that's that's uh, that's a, on the more general note. Yeah, it's super interesting. Uh, and, you know, part of what's happened to for campaign events and whatnot is that because, you know, the last 12 years, there hasn't been movement software for some of these things like mm -hmm. photography campaigns. Yeah, there's a pretty consistent set of infrastructure, but like all these other activities, it's been very hit or miss. Um, we, the more we talk to people, the more we're like unveiling <laughs> different innovations that are just kind of like very local and like figuring out something in their own context. Um, and so it's also like Alana and I have spent well, the last eight, nine months like talking to each other about examples and then like going out and talking to the community and then talking to each other again and then talking to the community. It's been a lot of back and forth uh, trying to figure out like where all these things are living. Well, uh, let, let me offer you uh, my last, you know, let, last remark for this because we're uh, actually, we are running out of time for this session. Um, I think about mapping software. Uh, like when I click on anything uh, that has map coordinates on Wikipedia, it gives me 10, 15 different uh, mapping services, including Google Maps, including Wikimapia, including OpenStreetMap. And yesterday I learned for some reason that, that, that for some reason, well, for community reason, um, OpenStreetMap in Macedonia doesn't provide accurate geographical data. While in Berlin, for example, I think they are as advanced as to include uh, you know, city monitoring cameras on maps, they are that detailed. And in Poland, it's, it's, it's very decent. And you know, it's, 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 it's a matter of choice of tools, uh, geographical preferences, as Shamat uh, mentioned in the, in the chat window, yes, preferring open, street, uh, open source uh, initiatives to proprietary level of privacy. That's the reason why some people prefer Telegram, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, um, I don't see any other raised hands in the uh, in the in the chat list. So I'm going to thank you, Ilana and Alex, for 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 the presentation. I'm also going to stop the recording.